What are you doing today, Dark? Intro video is ready. Mm-hmm. Oh. Fuck. Hey everybody, welcome back for another edition of Choirs and Cups with myself, Darkside, and with me we have the great Affordable Dreams. Take it away, buddy. Hey, how's it going, folks? Pleasure to be here tonight. Pleasure to be with all of you. I'm glad you're all tuning in for the show once again today. It's going to be fun, going to be exciting, going to be a good time. Uh, we have a few things coming for you today. Uh, we're going to do a pre uh, a pre bid talk about a few players that might be standing out in this bid that are you know, really no surprises, but should be so uh, pretty well competitions in, in, in the uh, bidding war coming up for this uh, Season 10 bid session. Uh, Dark, do you want to lead us off on that? Yeah, sure. So uh, we got some some guys to talk about, some guys that have kind of uh, fallen through to the CHL who really, by all rights, should be in the A or the N, right? Um, uh, someone who was passed up, uh, dropped from his, his draft pick contention was uh, a dumb Bigfoot. Uh, played a World Junior season with him in a bit of Facebook League. Uh, really, really talented forward, and I think a lot of people know that. I don't think I'm letting any trade secrets out here. I don't see him being a cheat contract for anyone who is interested in picking. No, not by any means necessary. No, no. <laughs> um, and another one like that is is Frenchie, someone who didn't actually get drafted while um, Julian, sort of that that other half of that pairing. Julian, did. and it's not Clima Voy, also part of that that tandem, also got mm. drafted. Yeah, so the, the the centerman of the two wingers didn't didn't go up, right? So right. we'll uh, we'll see. He went for five mil last season, I believe. Let's see if something similar happens. Um, on the goalie side, for me, I see two big names. Um, New feeling QC. You had uh, you had them last season, and uh, yeah, we obviously a fantastic goalie. goalie. Yeah, so that's gonna be that's gonna be a tough one to. It is. To <laughs> it's a tough the, one to lose. Yeah. I should have given him a two season. I wasn't thinking, uh, you know, whatever. Good for him. Uh, I think he'll do uh, really well again this season. It should be uh, uh, a little more pricey of having to take this. Yeah, I, I, would, th- I would think so. Uh, and then last but not least from my list on the goalies is Exile John being part of that Cinderella team with the Kitchener Rangers. Uh, fantastic goalie. Him and Cam really backstop that team to to a deep, a deep, deep, deep playoff run, stealing two games from the uh, Peets last season. But uh, yeah, For those sure. are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts on expensive guys coming into uh, bidding. Some good picks for sure. I- I'm going to stick with the goaltenders coming forward with you here with a uh, high voltage. He's he's been a vet, been around for a long time, and he is, once again is back in the CHL bidding with us. And uh, he's always had stellar years, very strong playoff uh, performances. He seems to stand tall in, in dire high stress need situations. So I expect him to go uh, fairly high this year in the goaltending bidding aspect as well. Um, any thoughts on him? Yeah, you know what? From what I've seen, he's a fantastic goalie, and, and by all rights, would probably be up in the AHL. Uh, so anyone who knows who he is, he's been around a long time. Is probably likely to throw uh, a two hundred and fifty k bid on him just to, you know, bump it up a little bit and make sure no one's getting him for for cheap. For, for dirt cheap, right? Exactly, exactly. Another one that's fallen down to us, buddy, is Mayers. Mayers has fallen down back to CHL, which is really weird to see, considering he definitely is that AHL caliber. And the fact that he got missed in that AHL side and is back down in the seat is huge. Mm-hmm. Someone could have a definite playoff goaltender and maybe, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 a standout, uh, solid starting goaltender where you don't have to worry about a, uh, a goalie tandem. Yeah. Agreed. Definitely, de- definitely, definitely huge. What would you say uh, for the, uh, the skater side? Drew Jacks, for sure. Uh, Drew Jacks, 20. He was a cyclone last season. Had a phenomenal rookie season. Got slept on in the draft, and he's back down here uh, playing that left-wing slot. Uh, I expect him to go for some big money. You know, I, I say at least $4 million he'll go to at least this season. That That's my estimated guess anyways. Uh, definitely a guy not to overlook. Super, super solid pot. Great hands, great finisher, and a very good team player. Uh, and last but not least on my list, buddy, is uh, a defender named Butt Fisted. Uh, he he was also slept on in the draft. He had one of the strongest defensive uh, aspects of, of the uh, season last year, playing with the Manitoba Moose. Uh, seemed to, again, to get to get missed in that draft. I don't understand why. He should have been uh, probably a second rounder, in my opinion. But he's back down here, so I expect to see him go for some big money. For sure, for sure. 
That's all I have, man. Uh. Right on. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's go through some some of the uh, some of the kind of concepts we're coming into bidding this season. So, uh, one of the big things is going to be defense, right? That stands out each and every single season. Defense, 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 and how much are these guys going to get paid? Are they going to be worth it? We see we see sort of both sides of that fence. You look at someone like uh, I believe Coffee Lidstrom was five point seven five, five point seven five in yeah. and around there. Yeah, and and became a draft pick the very next season and then stayed down with the GM tag. But, um, yeah, it's it's uh, <clears throat> definitely going to be an interesting storyline. You're going to ha have to see who the expensive ones are and how well they stack up in comparison to each other. For sure. Uh, just one second. We've got the hippie uh, 222222 in the chat here saying he has a couple sleepers. All right, hippie. Let's, let's, let's hear what you got. I believe that would be uh, Blazing Hippie returning for ownership yeah, this season. Yeah, I, I believe it is. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's hear what you got. Well, we wait for his response. Let's uh, keep uh, let's kind of move forward. Let's keep, let's, keep, let's keep chalking along. There's no point in waiting. It could take a few minutes. Uh, you know, bidding is getting closer and closer every time we talk. Every minute goes by. We're about nine minutes away from that bidding. I hope you guys got your bid. Uh, Stuff ready to go. You're ready to click some buttons, ready to get live, ready to get lit. It should be a fun, fun time. Uh, I know I'm ready and blazing and ready to go. Uh, we do have a few things for you tonight coming in as well. On top of our, our, our uh, talk about some guys that are big names, we do have a, a special video for you coming on tonight. We also got a little sneak peek for some of you new owners and new GMs about how to do a bid and how to place it properly and whatnot. And we'll have that for you uh, as soon as bidding uh, basically opens. Anything else that dark? Uh, no, again, I, we're going to touch upon that and uh, kind of look at some some other stuff too. Uh, we're going to show you, like I think you just mentioned, um, sort of how to do your your own bidding, right? As an owner, if you're if you're new, this is a good spot to see that. I know LG McDonald's taking it upon himself to create his own video as well, but in case you miss that or you have a hard time finding that, we're going to go through here. Being that we're both owner, owners, we're going to go through and we're going to show you how to place a bid um, and how that system works. Exactly. Now, a uh, hippie did say here, bullfighter lefty. Is his? Oh, there goes my card. Uh, is his sleeper pick? <laughs> so we'll have to keep an eye on that. See, see if uh, bullfighter does uh, in fact jump up there and, and how high he goes. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, he, having been mentioned in the stream might uh, might definitely affect the the outcome. And and to the comments saying, be careful which screen I show. My right. GM knows. I'm call it myself. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I'm definitely not going to be having my GM bid anyone up while I'm doing this stream. So you're not getting any inside information on who I'm looking at. That's right. So don't don't That's worry right. about it. <laughs> and the uh, yeah the bid we'll be placing is going to be no no shock of a player no no surprises there. Yeah, it's going to be something that just is a common knowledge thing, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, now we're getting pretty close here. Seven minutes left. We are now. I'm noticing they haven't updated the list. At least it says here. Uh, <laughs> no, Morvan, I don't have that much faith in my GM, but. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Um, and yeah, Yob, Yob tells the truth. He shouldn't, and I absolutely don't. Uh, I mean, no thumbs, right? Tragic car accident, literally no thumbs. Um, so... I need them toes, right? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, but yeah, the, the bidding list it appears to have not been updated since uh, about quarter after 11 Eastern time today. Um, some interesting uh, dynamics coming in with that being that... Uh, it, it could be late signups not getting through and getting pushed through to... Uh, I do want to touch base that quickly. When I was just talking about it a little bit, it's there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then they obviously have updated the list a little better. I do see the, the screen yes. kind of moving a lot, a, a, lot, a lot on me a little bit. It looked bit. like it just updated to me. Yeah, like I see, little, I see little twitches on the screen. Um, wondering if maybe that's what's what's going on here. Anybody who would have signed up in the last 20 minutes, half hour or so, would have made it in. The last update did happen seven minutes ago. I bet you that's going to be the last update there is. I would and imagine, rest, yeah. If you want to cut it any closer than five minutes to bidding, I mean, t tough luck, buddy. Sign up. See you. See yeah. you in TC. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, enjoy your, your random assignment, and hopefully you weren't too expensive on one of your previous contracts. That's the hope, right? That's the hope. That is the hope. Uh... We're definitely getting down there, man. Five minutes to go in the clock ticker. Uh, any comments out there, that questions maybe you want to ask before we kick off our, our show? We're just going to still a bit of time here for the opening stuff to come. 
Well, to answer Merbane's questions about what the numbers are at right now, you can kind of oh, see yes. some of the uh, the stats here, right? The uh, the cap space for each team and what's going on with them, uh, and then you can see yeah, the you actual put the breakdown. Stat page? Uh, sorry, yeah, I'm pulling up the stat page showing uh, okay the amount of forwards, defense, goalie on roster, maximum for the entire league, and uh, left. Um, yeah, and if now, you scroll down further, you, you can see the amount spent on each player or each category for defense and goalies by each team yes. already coming into the draft. Now, uh, remaining, sorry guys, to be, be clear, uh, remaining, the question being asked here, is actually in regards to how many players are remaining left needed for the roster. In bidding. Now, yes. there obviously are some hiccups here. You look at the Vancouver Giants, only have three guys, but only have eight remaining uh, spots. That's obviously a hiccup somewhere. Maybe that's a mess up with the draft picks sitting down there. They have... Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe remaining. No, if I do recall from last year, they did count the draft picks as part of the count, which really does. It's kind of a flaw. Um, so that yeah. definitely is. It'll, it'll throw exactly off your stats, right but it shouldn't affect the actual outcome of any of the, the team's ability to bids or anything like that. Right, exactly. Um, but yeah, like Dreams was kind of touching upon, you can see the, the stat analysis of what people are spending on goalies, defense, and, and forwards coming uh, forward green defense yellow and and red being goalie and you look at the the voltagers spending 10 percent of their um cap space just on goalies which is a considerable yeah. amount it's, it's huge to spend a goaltender that much money in my mind especially in a league like this it's, it, this is not real hockey you're not going to see a goalie in my mind shouldn't go beyond 1.5 you know yeah Again, to me, you, you all know my math. I think a goalie is 500k at best, but I mean, at million best. five at best. best. What's at worst? What's at worst? Please tell me. <laughs> What's at worst? Uh, gee, at worst is like a six million dollar bid the goaltender. Well, no, no, <laughs> but I'm just saying, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, uh, again, another team with the Mavericks 13% sitting on that cap space, 22% for King Sinister over with the um, at the Oceanic, I believe. Uh, yeah, twenty two percent of your cap space on goalies is is a little rough, but I mean, let's see what he's got in mind and what he plans on doing to get this uh, going, right? Exactly, exactly. I am excited though. I, I, any any of you uh, new GMs out there in the chat, or any of you getting jitters, getting you know a little bit stressed, or maybe anxiety coming into your first bidding season? Or even returning, even returning owners. I mean, I know myself. I get an edge this time of season. Yeah, I mean, dude, <laughs> I, we'll be we'll be perfectly honest. Uh, I'm currently wearing a diaper. And sorry, uh, Just Cause had a question. I, I did miss it. What is uh, Just Cause's question? Uh, let's scroll up in the chat here. I don't believe I see a question from Just Cause. To be honest. Yeah, it's it's up there somewhere. But uh, while just or uh, dreams takes care of that, uh, I will comment. I guess it would be uh, your first season doing bidding, wouldn't it be? Uh... Oh, question for you both: What do you feel was your okay. biggest rookie management mistake um, in that regard? Uh, okay, so I'll, I'll kick this for off first. Bidding. Yeah, for Ooh, me. Okay. okay. Um, Good question. I would have um, maybe chosen my my management a little bit differently. That was one mistake I made. Um, and I won't name any names, but yeah, definitely a big uh, rookie mistake for me. I think coming in with a different GM and in and, and Yob Cuff, he's going to provide a lot more support in that regard and a solid player in his own right. So kind of good on both fronts there. And I'll pass that question off to you uh, there, Dreams. Uh, you know, my biggest one, jeez. That's a tough one. That's a tough question to ask. Cause I, I, I really felt bidding went really good for me, but I think... Uh, my rookie mistake would have been, you know, letting a couple of guys go, helping another couple of teams out, and just being the nice guy and saying, you know what, I'm going to throw you a bone. Here's a guy back for you, uh, and taking nothing back in return. Uh, I think I think that would be my rookie mistake as owner and bidding is, is being too nice and, and just giving up a couple of players just to help other people out. Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, so we are one minute out from bidding. We are, yeah. So, within do of saying that, guys, we have something special for you coming in today. We have something uh, really made. We took a lot of time to make this, and uh, it's going to be a good little hype and flashback of last season. So, let's get into that now. Ask yourself, who writes your destiny? Favorite long shot, come from behind underdog. It doesn't matter how you got here. Only four are left standing. But ask yourself, is that all you got? 
Trust your inner voice that says you can skate a little faster, you can hit a little harder, and that winning doesn't happen by accident. Because when the average quit, champions are just getting started. Who will write themselves into junior hockey history? The MasterCard Memorial Cup. Right on. If that doesn't get you pumped up for some season 10 bidding, I don't know what will. Don't know what else will, right? <laughs> definitely, definitely. So bidding has uh, officially opened, and we've already got some, some bids. Uh, let's uh, let's sort this guy by price and see who's going real expensive. Uh, before we jump too much to that, do you want to do that quick uh, bidding breakdown for some of the new GMs here? Uh, yeah, sure. And and as we mentioned, uh, a dumb Bigfoot already taking a, a bid. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, so you know what? We'll use him. Uh, use him as an example. So uh, we'll start story from scratch for the new managers. You're going to want to go to the LGCHL PSN tab up top. Down underneath the shout box, you're going to see LGCHL PSN bidding. Uh, you'll have your bids, your bidding board, your roster and stats. Um, Okay, the site's having some issues, so I might be having a bit of a harder time. Um, but this sort of breaks down who's on your problem. roster. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to have hiccups, bear with us. Uh, but yeah, it'll show you in color coordination, uh, existing contracts, bids that you've won, and bids that you are winning. Um, so that could mean, you know, if it's in red, it might mean someone else currently has the bid on you, right? Uh, and then bidding board, this is simply the bids you've won and the hypothetical cap space you're going to use. So it breaks everything down based on position, uh, how much you've committed, that sort of deal. And then, yeah, like we showed you back with the, the original screen, the actual bidding section where you see everyone getting priced up. Um, you can sort that by uh, defense and, and each side of defense, forward and every spot and forward and goalie, right? You can, there's a bunch of different filters you can set there, but the main thing is learning how to actually place a bid. Um, so apologies to uh, a, dib, a big dumb foot, uh, uh, a dumb big foot. There we go. I'm going to place a name on you, uh, a bid on you because I'm fairly confident that you're going to go for more than the 750k I'm about to place on you. Uh, but yeah, you just click on the guy's name, say place bid. Uh, if you if you just want to go up by the minimum 250k, all you have to do is uh, press place bid. If you want to set uh, a larger number, you want to go up by. Please, for the love of God, double check your zeros. We've heard horror stories yes. about guys wanting that to put 1.75 mil <laughs> and putting 17.5. Don't want that to happen. You double, triple, quadruple check your zeros. It takes you an extra 30 seconds. Who cares? It is worth the money you will save and the headache you will have paying 17.5 million instead of 1.75. So we're going to start off by placing a bid on uh, Bigfoot. It's going to get you to confirm, double check those sort of things. Bid successful. So now he's he's listed as someone I currently have have under my bid, right? And you can see that under um, bidding board. Um, should be under here. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much the be all and end all of of um, placing a bid, right? Yeah, that's, that's basically the bottom line right there. Nice little walkthrough for all you owners that weren't sure how to do it. Um, keep the, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward, but that's that's definitely something simple to show you. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, now, yeah, again, Snipster16 there, there a link. taking uh, Sorry. a commanding lead on the, uh, the most expensive guy. It has been, oh, four minutes, and he's up to $5 million. What a jump. What a jump. That is, uh, that is quite I just, crazy. I just looked at that and it, it wasn't there, so I've been pretty quick, just recent. Yeah, that's uh, that is quite quick. I want to see um, what his his stats show. Uh, so last season in the NHL, uh, played a couple games, uh, spent some serious time in the in the AHL. Twenty six games played, fifty six points. Uh, that's that's some pretty solid numbers. Uh, went on a deep playoff run with the uh, sorry, the the Americans of the AHL putting up 13 points in four games. So obviously a pretty solid, talented player, and a lot of teams are looking to acquire his services, right? We also got uh, Wadden, uh, left wing, coming in a formula and right behind yep. him. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that that's too big right off the hop. 
uh, type of scenarios, uh, seeing you know th- very very fast paced quick bidding. Now it looks like this guy's only played in Xbox. He hasn't done nothing in the PSN side, but it looks from what I can tell. Uh, if you want to look a little further than that, you can feel free. But it looks yeah, like sure. he's an let's, Xbox guy. Let's uh, give a little a little look, Silu. Give me a second here. The site doesn't want to seem to pull it up for me. No, it's been kind of slow uh, back and forth and for me as well. And that's as to be expected. Where guys, keep in mind, we're we're dealing with the live bidding board, and everyone and their mom right now is looking at who's going for for what. So it's going to be a little a little funky. It's going to be funny, Key. And, and last season, the site actually did crash uh, during this, and uh, you know everyone's kind of like, "What's going on? It's crashed. Why did it crash?" Don't worry about it. It will definitely get going again. Uh, just give it a few minutes. Uh, mm-hmm. McDonald's all over the stuff. <laughs> yeah, a lot of former, um, a lot of former Xbox uh, gamer tags, um, but uh, Wadden coming in, uh, playing most recently on the <clears throat> LG HL side on the Xbox, uh, posting uh, in twenty six games in season thirty one, thirty points uh, and a negative seventeen. Now, I believe he's uh, signed up as a centerman, if I'm not mistaken, or uh, was it a winger? Left wing, uh, yes. winger, left winger, left winger. So yeah. uh, not not a crazy amount of point total uh, when it comes to the Xbox side, but it was the NHL level, so uh, maybe CHL is is going to be a little bit easier for him, right? Exactly, exactly. And by the way, Cameron, yeah, man, I think you just got a bid. So congrats, buddy. Nice, nice. Uh, sorry, who was who was that? Just received a bid. Uh, Cameron, double double not C. In the chat there, he just mentioned he got a bid, and Murban thanked him, so I'm thanking him. <laughs> I'm not sure what his uh, LG He's name is. LG name is not the same, so that's fine. I was going to pull up your stats for you, buddy, but it is what it is. Uh, if you want to share us your name, we can definitely take a look at that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, oh, other than that, you don't see a crazy amount of uh, high bids. Really just the two coming in. A couple at a million. Uh, Eichel L9L. Uh, Siege A coming at a mill. Chief Wardub, uh, a defenseman. I believe he's new to LG. This would be his uh, his first season. It looks like it. It definitely looks like it. Cameron uh, is declining to have his stats shown. He does not <laughs> want his price to go up. He is worried about that. All right. So, I mean, she should have said that. She said, no, thank you. I'm fine, guys. But now you've na- announced you might have some good stats sitting there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is that is a smart move. Uh, Yob Cuff noticed. Uh, guy in our chat here sitting at 750k uh, with the Mister Just Cause. Mister Just Cause. Yeah, and talking uh, along, talking along. Um, Coda Choda coming in. One of the uh, uh, the goalies expected to be a little bit higher on the price tag. Already already at a million. Uh, we talked about uh, Eagle Hawk a little bit. Some of these guys uh, coming through. Yeah, that is that is dreams. On the right here, up there. Yes, yes, sir. Who has that? <laughs> uh, it's, it's somewhere in the chat. You have to see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that's definitely that's definitely Mister Affordable sitting there, <laughs> who's not so affordable most times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, kind of back to to Chief Ward up here again. This is. First season in LG, um, he's already sitting at one point two five million dollars on the bid. Uh, so obviously got some good scouting and you know had a good showing. And there's a few different teams uh, already already jumping on that hammer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we'll see uh, we'll see what the price limit is for them on on that guy there. But uh, you know yeah, what? Yeah, things are climbing. Mm-hmm. All all things considered, a much more tame bidding session than which is very tame compared to last season i mean last season by this time i think we had julian already at like six or seven million at this point in time it was pretty quick yeah i pretty much um, i pretty much sneezed and half uh half my salary cap had gone to to one player it's crazy right exactly exactly we do have loops uh 88 now hitting at the three million dollar mark with four teams bidding on him or four bids three teams bidding on him so that's definitely another guy uh following the pack right behind uh wadden and snipester Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, like I mentioned, Just Cause bumping up now to $1 million. Having fallen from the yes. AHL last season after taking over management with the Milwaukee Admirals, you can see on his logo there. Um, yeah, going going up real quick. Obviously has a few friends around there, so congratulations, Just Cause. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, uh, congratulations. Yeah. Loops88, uh, despite being $3 million, another guy with no stats, so obviously did a good job in scouting and people picked up on him real quick and figured out who he is real and what quickly, he's about. Right. 
Exactly, exactly. Uh, definitely, to me, it already seems like it's going to be a slower paced bidding season compared to last year. Definitely. Uh, and the year before that, the past three seasons, I would say we've had an intense, hectic, crazy bidding happening. Uh, this year, it seems to be a little more calmer. So it seems like a lot of owners and GMs did their work and, and do deal due diligence and just uh you know did their own uh scouting and, and brought a whole bunch of new players in you are correct but I, i'm gonna be honest i do prefer the pass pace style not for me uh personally but uh, right i do i do enjoy watching other teams spend their money with such gusto yeah same here same here Uh, Yob just said Loops is a good player. Surprised he has no stats. Should have mm. done my due diligence. <laughs> right, come on. <laughs> I knew he was joining the league. <laughs> Where were you at, Yob? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Even Dark knew he was joining the league. You've yeah. been sleeping. <laughs> uh, to the uh, the comment about uh, our, our comment about your stats not being great. I mean. Just pulling up your stats on the Xbox side. Again, not taking shots at you, buddy. I'm sure you'll do fine down here. Yeah, man, for sure. Exactly. Uh, but don't yeah. say, And if we do something that, that might offend somebody, don't take it personal. Just just, just get, give, give the gears right back to us. That's what we're all about here. Having some fun. Exactly. Years, we'll see. exactly. You, can pull, <laughs> you can pull up my stats, buddy. They are truly awful. Yeah, you can go look at mine. Oh, That's why they call me Team Shitter and Offside King. Look at that! <laughs> it's us. We just got uh, posted to the uh, the uh, show box. Yeah, we did. Pulled me, uh, pulled uh, yeah, me up Teal, a little bit there. Real Teal just wrote me and said, "I just got, got home." So, yep. No worries. No worries. Oh, thank you, Teal. Uh, Canadian Bacon X One, not the Canadian Bacon who ran uh, Vancouver for so many years. No, up to one million dollars now. Bacon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, funny enough, I think they were on the same team at one point, weren't they? I believe at one point they were. Yeah, I think it was a for a short amount sure. of time, but yeah, it's kind of funny because I had to do a double take and go, wait, what? There's, there's two of them now? Shit, trades are going to be twice as hard. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, noticing uh, noticing a few names here coming up uh, that are starting to pull ahead a little bit here, but again, I think people aren't really go willing to go much past that, that huge cap range. I don't know if maybe the talent isn't there in the same way that uh, Julian was last year, or if the owners are more willing to hold back, right? Stay I think they're holding back more this year. I think, I think that's what uh, it is. I think a lot of them, with the new expansion coming in as well, I think a lot of them are are did their homework, bringing in new guys, doing the stuff they need to do to get the league to be better and bigger, and and definitely more of a, of a peaceful uh, pace. So uh, I'm definitely excited about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, again, not a crazy it amount. Be a lot more slower, though. Very yeah. slower. Yeah, yeah. Um, nonsense says, however you pronounce his name, another guy who uh, doesn't have uh, any stats as far as I can see. Uh, but coming in uh, already at 1.5 million. Right, exactly. Exactly. Uh, just cause, wow, up to 1.5 now. I think he's. Tied for the highest paid defenseman. Oh no, that would be uh, Seabass God thirty five coming in with Seabass. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now a lot of people are impressed. We are apparently hitting up around four hundred viewers. Which uh, thanks a lot, guys, for the uh, the support. Are we really? Jeez, nice. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Seabass yeah, God thirty five. Yeah, I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, but yeah, Seabass coming in with uh, uh, two million dollar cap hit so far. Again, another guy with no previous LG experience. So you wonder, are these guys uh, coming in through other leagues, whether that's Facebook, VG, whatever other leagues there are, or um, you know, is it just someone who's come in new and and really gone around and talked to a few different teams and, and got his name out there? And, and you got scouting. <laughs> yeah, cause again, some of these only seem to be team between two teams. For example, Eichel L9 or Ike's L9, um, however you pronounce your name, buddy, has two teams with 13 bids. So they're just going back and forth, back and forth, and it's only been 15 minutes. So 13 bids in 15 minutes. Basically, as soon as the other one relax, re reacts, they've uh, come back with it. Um, now, uh, a Dumb Bigfoot. It was taken away from me, unsurprisingly. I didn't think I was going to get him for 750k, but he's moving up to a million now. 
Perfect, perfect. He's he's, he's climbing. He's climbing. Mm-hmm. Um, two teams starting to battle it out a little bit on uh, Dick and Ava's 165. Uh, played with him a little bit, I believe it was in Season 8 on Seattle um, with uh, with Just Cause, actually. Uh, he <clears throat> He's a pretty solid defenseman. 750 is a, a, decent, a decent price for him. We'll see how he does throughout the rest of this bidding for session. Sure, definitely, definitely. So I'm just talking back and forth with McDonald here. <laughs> you're good, you're good. So, uh, Kind of left you in the dark for a little bit there, got quiet. You're uh, good, you know, you're good. I'm, I'm, I'm typing, I ain't talking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might I might fall over. That's yeah. two things at once. <laughs> uh, I believe Lutz is now up to uh, up to $4 million. And like we said, uh, I hear from everybody, he's a pretty solid player, so I wonder if he's going to stay at 4 I think the Lutz will hit $8 million this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the mean, comment from, uh, from Fear saying uh, he's thinking that it's pretty much just new owners kind of sticking on two two guys you know like they're really just staying with their with their picks and it's two guys battling it out for one spot which it could it could very well be it does which is um uh and and sorry to answer mcdonald is not coming on this show he'll be on with us uh uh, in the near future but not this particular show yeah we're looking to try getting him on uh next sunday uh as long as he's free he's a busy busy guy but we're definitely looking to get him in uh, next Sunday uh, for a guest appearance. Definitely, definitely. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it's not been a lot of... Wow, so uh, noticing that Wadden was actually... Had one bid that was $4 million. There was no there was no preamble. It was just, you know what? Nothing. Boom, $4 million, <laughs> Beat that. And I, I don't know if anyone will. I'm trying to lock that in right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and hey, it's, it's a bold strategy. See if it pays off, right? Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, in general, not a not a crazy amount of movement going on. Uh, not a lot. Not a lot. I mean, th- th- this segment, I said, yes, again, guys, won't be extremely long today. We're just doing a bit to kind of go through, have a bit of chatter, a bit of communication with you guys, and get our names known out there a little more in the community mm-hmm. for uh, you know, our, our our new media stuff. For sure. Um, we, we also I want to update that we do have a new uh, LG magazine coming out uh, at the. Uh, was it the end of week one we're doing it, buddy? We're doing one just before on Sunday. I believe we are doing a post bidding uh, this Sunday coming up. So uh, right before your games, uh, in and around you know the early afternoon on Sunday, uh, you might want to check that out. Uh, we're going to have both the French and English versions. So for any of you guys who are monolingual and either side, they'll help out a lot. Uh, to go back there and ask, uh, answer sorry some questions that were put there, uh, I heard uh, Intrinsic saying there that Shay loves his mini fridge in the penalty box. Uh, yeah, I've heard I a very heard that similar too, thing. Actually. I've heard the same thing. Um, <laughs> when it comes to just is that cause, Aardvark? yeah, that's our that is Aardvark, as you Aardvark call it. Aardvark is called it for me. Well, that, that's some teamwork right there. <laughs> and then uh, to answer Just Cause's question in regards to uh, how to how do new players stay out of the uh, the bidding? Like, how do you stay from going really expensive if you're just looking to be with a specific team? Um, honestly, the best advice I can give you is try and find a management group that you can scout with that is going to be good to you. You know, you have that chemistry they on really the ice. Enjoy. Yeah, off the ice. They respect you. They treat you well. And hopefully everyone does in LG. Um, but find the one that you fit best with. And then I would I would generally suggest that you try and stick around if them as much as you can. You, they definitely, uh, you know, they like you. They, they want to see you in bidding. They want to try picking you up or something. Someone, although they like you in general, you did yeah. really good. That's a good sign they like you and, and they're probably going to bid on you. And it's up to you then to keep going and scouting and try building up a higher rep for yourself or to say, you know what, I'm going to stick here and ride this out. This guy likes me. I want to keep just playing with this guy and keep yourself hidden and keep yourself low. It's totally up to you. Uh, everyone has a different style of wanting to be big or not big. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. So we knew how now have a new leader for the defensive side, Just Cause, coming in at three point two five million, and it's been nineteen minutes. That is high for a defenseman already. Um, Ike's L nine is now sitting at four point five. Um, and again, I, I didn't even notice this, but uh, Snipes is another guy where he went to five million off the hop. He did instantly. Off the instantly hop. Boom. Yep. Instantly Fifteen off million. The hop. I was like five million, rather not fifteen million. Um, <laughs> you wonder if someone accidentally hit an extra zero? No, I don't think that's the case. But no, I I, I don't think so. I think of someone who's a, probably a body of someone they really wanted. And they're trying to just scare people off of, of jumping into that uh, mm-hmm. bidding war. They're thinking we're going to pay and we're going to show it right off the hop. Sorry, uh, dreams. Did uh, Merbane have a question in regards to TC games? 
Uh, Maybe what not. What should guys on TC do to possibly make roster? That's yeah. the question here. So, uh, yeah, the TCs, the biggest thing for you guys is um, <laughs> which, uh, you know, make sure that they're actually uh, active. Make sure you're staying in that Discord. Uh, if you notice they, they're tagging people saying, hey, we need a guy to fill in, even if it's not your position. Try and hop in there. That's right. Just, just get into it. Those TC games are your best exposure. Take advantage. Because back in my day, uh, I'm going to say probably back in Dark's day, uh, there wasn't TC games to start with. There was nothing. It was just basically you sat in TC and you got no playing time, mm -hmm. got kind of ignored, uh, and, and it was boring. Uh, since season, I want to say six, five or six, they've started doing TC games and TC development games, and they're the best exposure. They get played uh, throughout the regular season. Uh, a lot of owners and GMs pay attention to those games. They get to see what you can do out there. They, they see your stats. Your stats all get saved to your profile based on those TC games and it gets you the best way to get either A off TC or B a big nice a nice bid or maybe even a draft pick uh, yep. in the draft at the end of the season. Exactly. That's the biggest thing is stay positive guys. Don't don't get disheartened if you if you're you know sitting on TC behind a really good team. Uh, just understand they might need you at some point if any call ups happen, any emergencies, God forbid, with the, the players. But yeah, just you know stay active stay positive again it's it's just a video game so if you don't get to play a crazy amount of games in a season don't let it get you down separate that from your personal life and, and your game life right exactly exactly um speaking of which man uh, remember the video we did for bidding uh yes mcdonald uh kind of forgot what he was supposed to do and he did just ask if we could just clip it for him and send it to him uh yeah that's no problem i can uh, i can get that done uh, it'll be. You, it'll be. You can do it uh, in the next half hour if you don't once the show's done. Too, not really a big yeah, deal. Yeah, that's what I mean. We'll, we'll do it once the show's done because unfortunately I didn't. Uh, I didn't record. Definitely. It'll have to be a, a clipping done by us through this stream. Yeah, definitely. I just thought I'd, I'd throw it out before I forget. <laughs> uh, Dark, what happened with season eight TC goalies? Uh, are you talking about yourself because you were TC quality or? Oh, was that, was that the, the question you're asking me? Or <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you're going for there, buddy. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, uh, yeah, again, we were in a situation in, in Season 8, Seattle, we had a lot of, uh, we had two very strong goaltenders, both prospects, so there's no chance of getting called up, both on um, uh, relatively um, cheap contracts, and, and our TCs were able to stay active and stay positive, and Yagmir, if you remember him, draft pick this season, was actually a TC on that Season 8 team, came in for me this season, had another great year, and moved on up to the NHL. That positive attitude really does help. And I remembered him, right? Like I went into season nine and went, hey, I remember him being pretty solid when he, he was in warm-ups and TC games and whatever the case may be. Um, and it helped him exactly. a lot. It got him, it got him pretty far, you know. Um, and now he's up in the NHL drafted for now at least. We'll see We'll see where he finishes this season. Uh, I'm trying to read this name here. Chester Damien 77 said, I learned so much from those uh, red versus blue games. It really helped me transition from drop-ins to club play. And he's, he's totally correct. It, you can really learn how LG format is run through the TC games. It's way different feel playing these in this league than it is playing a drop-in or just average uh, club games with your buddies. It's a whole new atmosphere. Definitely, definitely. Um Noteworthy stats. Uh, Just Cause now up to $4 million as a defenseman. Someone, three teams want him really, really bad. They're, they're, they're bidding hard. They're bidding hard. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited to see uh, where he ends up and who these guys are that are bidding uh, this kind of money on him. You know? Yeah. Another guy coming in here, Hades Spawn, uh, another expensive guy. Only two teams touching him, though, right? So just a, a bidding war straight up. Uh, yeah, and, yeah exactly. and Wolf Mode, exactly. to answer, if you uh, if you don't have a bid on you, uh, you will get placed on TC and randomly assigned to a team, uh, usually before, well, not usually, definitely before the Sunday games. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Real Teal, uh, friend of the show, coming in at 3.25 now. Uh, similar, getting close up to where she was last season. I believe she was a $4.5 yeah. million dollar goal. Yes, <laughs> she was. We also have Rob so another Bob sitting there um, Rock playing Rose left wing this season. Yeah, uh, at two point two five million. Two point seven five now. Yeah, uh, yeah, he just jumped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bid just started coming a little quicker now, uh, and the, the, mm. the battle is starting to begin, which is what we're used to. Yeah, uh, you still see you know, a few of them kind of just holding back a little bit and 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 uh, dropping out of the bid race a little bit, like Luke's fell down a bit now. He's been on hold for about fifteen minutes. Still at four million, you know. Uh, Mm -hmm. 
there were scenes of other ones just slowly. I mean, the team, they, up, yeah. two team, 11 bids, 4.25. Yeah. These two are battling already. I mean, <laughs> yeah. same with uh, Aichi's nine. 15 bids on two teams. This is a battle. This is what we expected. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, I did mention uh, I was going to be putting a, a, what was it? Correct me if, if I'm wrong, guys, here, but I believe the stream yesterday I was saying I was going to put 6 million starting bid on Merbane. Now, I've been busy with this stream, but guys, you got to get them up to above 1.75 or else I'm going to steal them. What are you doing? Right. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Kid, all kidding aside, you know, whoever whoever gets more is very lucky. He's, uh, he's a solid goalie. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. Uh, Ardvart says they put it at 10 million. I think Ardvart's eating too many ants. Oh, I said 6 million for crazy, Matt. Oh, my bad. Well, then you know what? Screw Mervain. <laughs> he can do his own thing. Your GM's nailing you now, man. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he, he keeps me in line, man. He makes sure when I'm uh, when I'm bullshitting, he's on Who's me. my GM? Gmail, GMA. We'll she is in here. I now. saw. I saw a comment earlier about uh, this being her first uh, first bidding session. It is her first bidding session. Yes, it is. She was AGM last season mm -hmm. and did not really partake in any of this. So this is the first time rolling in with this. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for baseball sure. superstar got his first bid. I, I thought you could. Is, is it not? Is it that not? Uh, uh, is that much pain? Baseball superstar. Uh, I believe so. There was a different baseball-based name, so it could have he could have been that other one. Again, apologies, guys, if we don't know your name. Yeah, see, there she is right there, your, your GM showing up. There's, um, there's Tigris. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, again, apologies if we don't know who you are in the LG community based on your, your chat. On your name. Yeah, yeah you might add something different. <laughs> yeah, I've got my back too. Right on. Um, yeah. So again, uh, a right winger in Canadian bacon coming up to four point seven five million dollars. I believe last season was jumping his, up high. Jumping yeah, up high. I believe last season was his first season on the PSN side. Uh, not playing a lot of games though. Uh, Eight point six games. Not really a considerable uh, sample size to look at. But um, spent uh, the last couple seasons over on the Xbox side. Um, putting up some pretty solid numbers, so we'll see. Uh, we'll some very see. decent. Yeah, so we'll see how he he goes. Uh, <clears throat> how high he goes in this bid in this draft here. Um, yeah, we got a lot of expensive guys coming through now. Uh, Haiti spawn now up to three point seven five. Um, trying to catch up to Just Cause for the highest D man bid thus far. Um, like you mentioned, Rock Gosu sitting at two point seven five. Uh, the real teal at three point two five now. Slowly pushing their yes pushing their way back up um and oh a defenseman coming in with ace siciliano two teams going hard after him big time now big time. i believe uh sorry screen's kind of glitching here uh i believe yeah he's, yeah, he's kind of like it's kind of it jumping up a little bit on you right <laughs> like giving you that lift yeah. i apologize guys i'll try and keep that uh that cursor roll timed well but uh yeah he i believe is new to LG, so obviously two teams scouted him, and they're they're going to town. They really like him. Yeah, bids are coming in again. I said pretty fast, pretty furious. Uh, not as fast as you see in the past, though. Like I said, it, it's been it's been some, somewhat mellow and numb mm -hmm. up to this point. Now there were some mentions of big big truck going expensive in the uh, the show box, and he he certainly is. Uh, this will be his second season in the LG CHL PSN side. Uh, first, starting his career in season eight on the Mississauga Steelheads, posting some pretty solid stats. We're being honest, as a defenseman, to go twenty-one and three, twenty-three points, and a plus fifty-six. That is um, nothing to sneeze at whatsoever. So I can imagine him going fairly high already at three point two five. Yes, exactly. And Canadian Bacon taking the lead over Snipester. Now, reminder, Snipester only had one team go at him. Bacon's got two guys coming after him. So it's it's full-on bidding war for the right-winger Canadian Bacon. Full-on bidding war. <laughs> and Haiti spawn is... does seem slower now. I'm hoping it's not our video making it worse. I'm sure it's just all the action on the site. Uh, so Dubla Duval Blood looking for a shout-out. Uh, guys, get this guy up to at least $7.5 million. There you go, Duval Blood. <laughs> Um, so this is uh, another guy we talked about here in uh, Eagle Hawk going and sitting at Eagle 2. Hawk. $2. Yeah, he, he was definitely a big mention uh, throughout the uh, chatter mm -hmm. coming into this. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and three teams going at Murbane. He's now up to $2 million. Uh, not as crazy as last uh, year. Murbane I believe he's now gone over the limit of a goaltender in my mind. Sorry, Murbane, but $2 million is not worth a goaltender. Well, he's just hoping to stay under his four from last season. I think that's that's he probably is. his hope, right? As a goalie, as anyone really, you don't want to go for a lot of money. Um, some people might like the bragging rights, but it's not it doesn't generally help your team. You don't want to be more than 500K, in my opinion, as a player. Exactly, exactly. And maybe I'm biased because that's all I've ever been because I'm a terrible, terrible player. But that's just me, right? Uh, and Ace Chiliano coming in, taking over the highest paid D-man at 4.25. Now, two teams really going hard at it. Really going at it. Yeah, they're pushing hard. They aren't letting it, it roll down much at all. It's been 30 minutes, 15 bids. Every two minutes, they're re-upping that bid. They are, and it's insane. <laughs> now, uh, as much as this is entertaining for us guys, new owners, I would make a rec recommendation. Let it roll a little bit. You don't have to reactionary uh, uh, bid back and forth. You're just spending money quickly and making guys expensive. And as much as you might want them right now, wait till week two and three when you go, crap, why did I spend six million? Why did I spend this money on them? Right, exactly. Yeah, because you know what? You're as, much, as good as he might be, he's never going to be worth that six mil that you're going to put on him. Unless he goes and gets like 200 points this year, which I don't see anyone doing. I, I, that's my opinion anyways. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, <laughs> Chill Bill coming in saying you have to spend, spend, spend. Now, it's one strategy. Maybe uh, maybe we got an owner or a GM in here trying to get the other guys to go the wrong direction. Yeah, that's very possible. <laughs> Um, Chaos Shall Reign 8, uh, defenseman coming in here now. Three teams, four bids, $3 million. Uh, now, <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, someone's coming in and, and really jumping up. They went from 500 to 750 to 1, to 1 million to 3. Um, played last season. Again, not a, not a crazy amount of stats. His main stats coming from season 8 um, <clears throat> with the Oceanic. Uh, seems to be a pretty yes. solid player. Uh, but obviously, some people know a little more than than we do. They're putting a, a fair amount of money on them, so we'll see a fair how amount of money on for them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm back in one second, but just keep it rolling. Yeah, you're good to go. You're good to go. Uh, any any questions anyone has who's new to this uh, this segment of of LG in regards to the bidding, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll uh, I'll get back to you on those. Uh, but in the meantime, we're just going to continue to uh, look at this. All right, I'm back. Oh, wow, well, you weren't kidding. That was about two seconds. Yeah, I had to get my cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, perfect, Sean! Finally making an appearance. I was wondering when he would, uh, when his name would pop up on my list. Uh, spent last season. He's a prospect. He spent last season on the uh, Windsor Spitfires. Put up really solid stats: 14, 18, one, a plus nine, eleven points on um, a fairly middle of the pack team. I, I feel safe calling them. Yeah, for sure, middle of the pack uh, easily. Yes. Mm hmm. Another guy who uh, Chuck 07 sort of getting starting to get on the board now. Um, saw this guy around a lot in bidding. Um, new to the league, solid player. Wondering how much he will likely go for uh, in this this season. Yes, yeah, same here, same here. Uh, it's gonna be exciting to watch as it goes along. Remember, there's like three three and a half days to this. Mm. <laughs> so I mean, uh, these bids can go on for those for exactly that long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what? We're almost at the point where a defenseman might overtake the um, the forwards as a top bidder, which is surprising. It's looking like it right now. It's coming close, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, in response to Chill Bill, uh, absolutely not. This is not a three-day stream. I I have to do my no, own we're not, No, we're only here for like an hour. Yeah. Uh, actually, we're just going to get you started. 20 minutes left, yeah. and we're probably going to be uh, rounding it out and closing up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're not uh, we're not sitting here for for three days. That's that's just not exciting. Will I be awake for three days? Maybe, but a three yeah. hour show, a three day show? No, no, I'm good, buddy. Mm -hmm. The only way that that happens if we hit like you know, a hundred thousand dollars in, 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 in merchandise. Yeah, if you guys if you guys pay us to do a three day stream, I will do a three day stream. But that's about it. How important is it for owners to recruit new players? I'm sorry, can you read the rest of that question from Just Cause? Uh, give me one second. Go back into that. Yeah, I was kind of looking at the uh, site here. Uh, how important is it for the owners to recruit new players for the con for the contract and also for the future of the league? It's very important, just cause uh, it's it's on us as CHL owners and CHL GMs to do that to scout new players, bring them into the league, and help it grow. 
that way we get enough TCs, enough players to fill more teams and to fully expand uh, the league to the extent we want to be into. If you aren't doing that, you're not just not doing your job, in my opinion. It, it's not just up to the league to advertise this. It's up to us to do our part as well and get these guys in. Yeah, exactly, right? And that's and the big bonus we do have in the CHLs, we get to bring in some really qu- high-quality prospects that can't be touched by the a- AHL and the NHL. Uh, and, and in reward for us doing that, we're strengthening the league, allowing them to do stuff like uh, expand on um, <clears throat> the, the amount of teams every season, right? Um, exactly. Uh, it is possible to so- sign up tomorrow, Gong Show Goon, uh, but you will be randomly assigned as a TC. To you a will team. not be put into yes. bidding. Um, for sure. Which for is sure. not a bad spot to be in. Never is a bad spot to be into. Being a TC can really get you up there mm-hmm. and, and really get you knowing, and you can work your way onto a roster spot. If you're diligent with your team and you're like, hey, I'm here to practice, here to warm up, I'm here to fill in for any game you guys need or whatever, 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 uh, you, you may work your way into a spot that season. Um, and if anything else, you get your name known for next season to get back into bidding or possibly the draft. Uh, to answer your question there about uh, changing your, your name, uh, I don't believe you can change your name at this point. Um, you'd have I to. I believe it's all locked. Yeah, I believe it's locked. Uh, I'm not too sure when that opens back up, but that's a really good question for a bog. It is. Uh, yeah, looking at some of these. Uh, okay, so King of Thieves, a left winger coming in here. Two teams fighting over him. He's at $3 million. And that seems to be sort of the theme. Not a lot of teams uh, going in on, on one guy. It's generally been two two or three teams at most touching them. But um, yeah, King of Thieves, uh, a winger here. Season 8 was his last season playing in the WHL for the... Uh, I'm pretty sure the Gatineau Olympics are actually in the queue. I don't know why it's listed as WHL. Uh, 15 games played with 22 points. Uh, pretty solid uh, Pretty solid season for him. And obviously he's gotten better since then. So they're looking to spend a good chunk of change to get him on the team and make a big, big difference. Um, now, yes, it has been. Sorry to roll back to a comment earlier uh, about thoughts on NHL's, NHLers dropping to uh, the CHL. Uh, for how often that happens, um, I, I have it's no... very often, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, in certain cases, it's availability issues, right? So they can't... They, they're they not likely to be um, staying up um, in the the NHL at that kind of cost, right? It doesn't make... Right, a, exactly. And a lot of the NHLs are dropping down due to uh, schedule changes at work, whatever else. So this long time they can play into, so they just, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they want to play. They don't want to mm-hmm. quit because they're worse schedule changes. And the CHL really is the earlier times to play, and sometimes late times aren't good enough for them. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of reasons why it happens, right? Uh, and again, these guys are obviously good players, but, you know, I, I really haven't seen too, too many guys that are like bending you over a barrel if you if you play a structured style if you practice and you and you work on your chemistry they're not gods they they can do really great things but you can work to be as good as them right even maybe talk to them and get some pointers get some tips instead of putting out a lot of resentment i see towards the more skilled you are if you do play in the the chl you get a lot of flack for that and the league has done a good job of trying to keep them out there's only so much you can do though right Exactly, exactly. Uh, like we mentioned, New Feeling QC coming in at 1.25, currently the fourth highest paid goaltender. Um, Rebane leading that pack, 2.5. Yanni uh, Bruins, who wanted to see his name, I'm assuming that's why he got me to switch. Uh, and uh, Fladman rounding at the top four. Yes, exactly. Um, now, we had quite a long question there from uh, CJD, the professor. Look at that right now, <laughs> that doesn't look like if a you long had to one. allocate percentages for your salary cap by position, best case scenario, what would you spend? What would your spread look like? For example, centers, goalies, defense, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and why? Uh, my, my expenditures, really, to me personally, I would probably go about fifty to sixty percent of my defense. Honestly, uh, I build around defense. I love defense. Goalies. Probably ten percent, and the rest I put towards my forwards. Yeah, position wise, uh, I couldn't give you percent on, on centers and right wings. I, I really, I really wouldn't know mm. that. I would say probably closer to ten percent on my wingers, and the rest would go to my centers. 
Yeah, and that's the thing, right? Defense and your centers are going to be the majority of your money. So if you want to use percentages, yeah, sure. Uh, probably 70% is going to be coming in around uh, between defense and, and 70 to 80% on, on defense and center. Your wingers, your goalies typically tend to be the cheapest. Uh, and not that goalies don't deserve it because they are very important to that team. It's just sort of the way the infrastructure is set, uh, is set right? Not a lot of teams exactly. can afford to have that set up, and defense is so expensive. And again, wingers, while valuable, um, aren't the same kind of two-way players that you see in a center or as important in terms of uh, keeping the game closed when it comes to defense. And the even the offense with the defense, the breakout coming out, it's, it's a big, big game changer. And again, it's all dictated by what people are willing to spend money on, and that typically is defense and, and, and centermen. It is, big time, big time. So it's going to be huge to see uh, this year again. Uh, is defense the one that goes high, the highest around the league, or do some have uh, different strategies where, where offense is their main focus? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and we have seen the attacks. We've got, we've got to focus on offense and their goaltending first, thinking scoring power is going to win in the things. And sometimes that works. Sometimes if you have enough offense, defense doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see how it works out this year with a lot of guys. Uh, okay, so to answer your question, bidding lasts uh, 72 hours. So I believe it'll end on uh, the 14th of February at 9 p.m., if I'm not mistaken. I believe you're right. You'll yeah. be correct. Uh, and CJ, I believe, has another question for us in regards to spending a lot on one player. Uh, yeah, for sure, right? Um, just looking through some of the names here, I've got... Well, I'm just writing back somebody. <laughs> yeah, you're good. I can I can tell, buddy. Uh, yeah, so Hades Spawn coming in at $4 million. He's starting to come up. Teal is at 4.5, I believe, matching her total. She was either 4.5 or 4.75 last season. Um, so again... Exactly. I think she was, was 4.75 last season, to be uh, absolutely correct. I believe so, yeah. Uh, Ace Siciliano coming in at 4.75. Yeah, some D-men really going up there high. Uh, Just Cause at, at still at $4 million. Chaos Shall Reign, that's... Uh, so that's four D men already sitting above four million dollars. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's a lot. And again, we talked about it. Defense is very very expensive. We did about defense going high and being expensive as heck this year. We mm-hmm. definitely talked about that. Yeah, and then a, a bunch in the three million dollar range. Again, we've only been here for forty two minutes. This is not. Yes. You know, we talk about forty two minutes. There's seventy two hours of this hours to and go, before, and some are already halfway to ten million. <laughs> yeah, like my my lord. Um, I mean, we have three, four, four, five million already, and that's yeah. exactly for you know. So yeah, another definitely what? see what happens there. Yeah, another another uh, six, seven guys at four million. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We'll see if some of the experienced managers can kind of come in after the the wreckage of the the mass mass bidding and and take some of the guys under the radar that people start to forget about. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <coughs> Any other comments or questions as we go along here and, and now, we do this show? If you want to look back, I believe CJ had a question about really expensive players uh, a little bit earlier. If you want to give that a quick... Uh, something about 7 or $8 million. Again, I, I saw it very briefly. Um, but uh, continue, guys, giving you guys some coverage here. Um, let's see what the most expen- expensive center is. I'll load up that page for you. Yes, thank you. Uh, now, when you see a team reach out with a seven or eight million bid off the bat for a winger, how does that usually impact the composition of the rest of the team? You know, it makes it hard because after you spend eight million, depending on what you already had on your team, some teams came in with only like twenty million to go. Some had uh, eighteen million. Some had the full twenty-five million to work with. So you take away eight million on one player. Now, defense is going to ride you high. I, I don't see anyone getting defense this year. Maybe a few. At 500Ks, but most for the most part, they're going to go in the one to two to two million range. Mm-hmm. So you got to add in six of those at two million. So that's already 12 million plus your eight million. That's 20 million spent. You better hope to God the rest of your players are 500K, or you're going to have a trouble feeling in those lines. Exactly. I've only seen a couple teams who were able to, and we'll kind of point to uh, JR last season with the Pete's. Did a good job, spent a lot of money on Julian, but had a lot of those pieces that were cheap, but he still had to spend to the cap, right? Did a good job building. Um, unfortunately, didn't That's win. Right. The, didn't win the men, but was at very least a very competitive team all season long. Um, so very, yeah. There exactly. are guys. There are guys who do it at a, as a calculated risk, um, and some are a little bit more uh, loose with it. But 
Uh, and sorry, no, I'm not going to show you what the lowest bid on a CHL defenseman is because it's 500k. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else got a big name they want to talk about that's out here that, that, that maybe we're not talking about that's maybe out here that's not up in the high ranks and maybe should be? We mentioned Big Truck who's at 3.5, but he's not up in the very top of the ranks yet. Anyone else you guys can see that maybe should be uh, a little more up there and standing out? Uh, well, I see Theo Katz coming in here, uh, popping up a little bit out of uh, out of the woodwork. Asa Chiliano has now picked up the top spot as a D-man, which I, I don't think I've seen yet in bidding. Have you? Uh, where for an extended period of time, a D man has held that lead. It's pretty I rare. Don't, it is pretty rare. It's usually it that. Rare. It's usually that one prospect forward coming in, who a couple people have caught it caught wind is. of, and and it just blows the doors off everything. Right. It's not too often a defender takes that that ring. Yeah. Now, <laughs> King Couture, I gotta ask, um, how much money is Bigfoot paying you to make all these comments about how fantastic he is? I gotta, I gotta ask. <laughs> um. Yeah, so Just Cause, good question about guys hiding their, their names and changing up to try and come back down. Now, if I'm not mistaken, and correct me wrong, their uh, dreams, there's been some new systems put in place to kind of curb that a little bit. There has been definitely a few a few places. Yeah, so um, the, the idea is to cut it down so that you're only able to change your name within a certain time. So you can't do it right before bidding, right? So that guys miss out on you and go, oh crap. But a guy, again, guys, if someone does do that to you, um, if you're if you're a manager and, and looking to find that guy, uh, name changes do show up in the action center. You can go check there exactly. every once exactly. in a while, see what the guy's switching his name to, and it's pretty easy to find out. Or if you, yeah, if you, there's a, there's a couple ways to find the guy who once he's he's changed his name. There's a couple of tips and tricks. Talk to the experienced managers and owners. They'll let you know it's impossible to hide yourself in LG. And that's the whole point, right? You build yourself exactly. a reputation and you work with that. Yep, exactly. Things are still going. They're going pretty steady, though. I mean, I, nothing that I, I that's too unreal. I definitely expected a few higher bids out mm. here than Odia's drop. But... Uh, for the most part, we're sitting in a perspectival, uh, a lot of bid wars that are small chunks at one time. It just uh, seems to be a yeah, a couple teams here and there. And now this might be interesting where when they kind of tire themselves out, um, they might start to to switch their they hedge their bets. So let's say the second team on Ace Chiliano here doesn't get them. Do they start pushing for loops? Do they start pushing for real teal? Um, where do they go exactly. with that, right? And do you really start up a whole right. other new bidding uh, bidding war? So that's where it gets kind of interesting. Exactly. It, it really does. Um, Chief Wardub appears to have uh, kind of settled down in terms of the bids. He went up real quick, real fast, but he's uh, he's come down pretty quick. He has, he has, yep. Uh, but yeah, again, uh, I don't have too, too, too many more thoughts. Again, it's starting to settle down a little I'm bit. I'm basically running out of thoughts myself. I'm kind of talking to management back and forth here as we're doing it. It's kind of getting sidetracked a little bit mm -hmm. as they're asking some and questions. And again, guys, so. I appreciate you you coming out here. Uh, but like, I, like we're kind of talking about, we're both owners. We're kind of itching to get our bid on. And as much as I'd like to do that in front of however many viewers we currently have going on. I like my scouting <laughs> list being quiet. So it, it is. It definitely is hard to do that. So um, I think let's kind of wrap it up here, bud. We've got 12 minutes to go for an hour mark we want to do. Let's kind of wrap it up here. Let's end it off here. And let's, and let's bring it back on Sunday with a better show where we're both a little more focused. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, again, appreciate everyone coming out. Appreciate the sport, support. Hope you enjoyed the show and kind of getting our takes on a couple different people, see if any of our predictions were correct. I believe most of the guys we mentioned went up, uh, up around where we talked about. So, um, yeah, Definitely. Again, don't be afraid to come back. We'll be here with you on Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern uh, to do some post-bidding breakdowns, talk about all the stuff that goes on over the next couple days. Um, we'll do a few predictions of the league uh, coming forward after all the rosters have been set and whatnot. We'll do a couple of predictions about what we think is going to happen in each division and maybe, maybe make a... Uh, bold prediction for the Mem Cup winner this year. Definitely. Definitely. But uh, yeah, right on. 
I'll, uh, it's been fun, folks. I've been happy to have you guys out here. Uh, best of luck to you. Go out there, have a good season, keep your sticks on the ice, stay out of that box, and may the hockey gods be with you. For sure. All right, guys. Have a great night, and uh, look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Peace.